When it comes to big tech companies, Apple is by far the king of hyping up a certain number of events every year where they announce new big things that you haven't seen before. Apple had one of those today. So basically what we expected from this was a new iPad, maybe a thinner iPad, a new pencil, and then some other things that probably had nothing to do with the new MacBooks. The most anticipated part of the new MacBooks being the M4 Apple Silicon chip. And wildly enough, it actually turns out that I guess part of making the the biggest, thinnest new iPad new, powerful enough, uh, involved actually skipping from the M2 chip to the M4 chip, which meant that today we got our first look at what Apple Silicon looks like, at least in its almost least powerful form. So it's least exciting. And look, I'm not going to blame you if you're one of these people who questions the usability or real use case of the iPad. I've basically sold both of the iPads I've had after like a few weeks of owning them, but it's interesting enough. So the screen is really big, it's really fast, and it actually turns out that we got a lot of juicy, juicy details as to what kind of AI things we can use this new silicon, both in terms of its internal capabilities, the GPU itself, and sort of how Apple sculpted this. So what advantages does this new Apple silicon hold? What is Apple promising around this? Do we think we're still gonna see M4 MacBooks or maybe an M4 Ultra coming out in August or September? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So one of Apple's strong suits over the past two years has been that they've just been cooking in the background on AI basically nonstop. They're not doing a lot of flashy things, but for instance, they quietly released MLX. They've quietly been releasing all kinds of new 3D uh, Nerf-based models and imaging models. They've also slowly been making the Apple ecosystem, including the M3 Mac Studio, one of the best systems to actually do local AI on, to the extent that there actually uh, is a lot of buzz and a lot of trend now around networking together a bunch of M3 Ultras in the M3 Studio with Thunderbolt and actually finding that in many cases, they're actually faster than doing the equivalent with 4090s, and in some cases, even cheaper. So Apple understands what it's doing with AI, even if what their direction is, is kind of uncertain. There've been some rumors that they might be implementing certain things from OpenAI on device in iOS 18 with the next iPhone. And even though the iPhone 14 really wasn't that different from the iPhone 13, Apple is innovating in really interesting and impressive ways given what we know with the Apple M4. So what does the M4 actually have to offer? So basically this is around 50% faster than the M2 that was in the last iPad. So it's obviously easy to make the M4 look good when you compare it to something two generations behind it. But what's interesting here is given the fact that this iPad is so thin, we have to assume that this chip is pretty efficient and it's pretty impressive. This is in theory the worst version or probably like the second worst version of the M4 silicon we'll see. Likely the iPhone will get a slightly dumber version. So in short, this is based on Apple's second gen three nanometer technology. So a big part of this event was Apple kind of giving the finger to other companies that have tried to release CPU or kind of ARM-based products with NPUs or some kind of neural engine that is only meant to be used for AI processing, so basically uh, inference. And they boast that the M4, at least the one in the iPad, has 38 trillion operations per second or tops, which is 60 times faster than the first time Apple did this with the A11 Bionic chip in 2017. What's curious to note here is that uh, Qualcomm is another big player here along with Intel. And Qualcomm technically has a chip that can do 45 tops with their X Elite. However, there's a really big question as to how you actually use those transactions and how you turn them into something. And I would argue that Apple, just with their supply chain and vertical integration and doing AI things, has a massive advantage here and anything Intel is doing is easily two to three years behind uh, what these ARM chips are doing. And obviously Intel doesn't make phone chips anymore. So it's kind of weird to consider them a player here, but they're also claiming they're developing these new kind of edge devices, kind of like NUX or kind of uh, like laptops. And it'll be curious to see what happens there. And Apple kind of just keeps winning because today the Biden administration also announced that they are revoking the export licenses for both Qualcomm and Intel to export any kind of basically AI accelerated silicon to China. And you might think, okay, well, why does that matter with Apple? And it matters because Microsoft is trying to make a very similar offering with kind of AI on mobile. And basically, Qualcomm not being able to export anything to China along with Intel just means that their offerings will be much more expensive since fewer people will be able to pay back the development costs and the time it just took to make these chips. 
So Apple continues to win because they'll have, in theory, better performance, better usability with their vertical integration, and it'll be much cheaper because they've already made all of these at scale today, like they're shipping on May 15th. So I thought that was also pretty interesting. So the single spec of the M4 that Apple gave us some insight into is pretty interesting. It has a 10 core CPU with some performance cores and some efficiency cores, making it again, 50% more powerful than the M2 and the prior iPad Pro. One of the things I was surprised they didn't go more into was how the M4's 10 core GPU also supports dynamic caching, which is in theory, something you could use to speed up LLMs. It, this is actually kind of a clever thing that was figured out with MLX that gave MLX massive, massive uh, performance improvements when people realized how you could more efficiently use uh, the HBM 3E on the M3 Apple Silicon and MacBook Pros and the M3 Ultra. The big thing here is that both the M1 and the M2 Ultra have actually had the same 16 core NPU since their debut. And the massive improvement in the size of the MPU points that Apple obviously sees value here, um, but also is now actually giving a greater allocation of silicon to this part of their processor, which is pretty cool to see. And it's pretty significant. It's actually twice the size as it was in the M3. And the size of the increase is kind of interesting. So the increase from the M1 to the M2 was twice as large as the increase from the M2 to the M3. So it looks like Apple kind of took a bigger leap here and actually got some wins out of it. It's sort of curious that this also comes only a few days before Microsoft's Windows and Surface AI event in Seattle on May 20th. So again, Apple uh, punching above their weight, coming in before their competitors, and Microsoft and Windows are clearly lagging behind just trying to maintain relevance. And again, Microsoft, if in case you hadn't realized, is planning on using Qualcomm's upcoming Snapdragon X Elite processors, which uh, they claim will be faster. But again, if the tooling isn't there, it doesn't really matter how fast the MPUs are. So what does Apple really want people to use this for? So basically, Apple is portraying all this AI horsepower as a means to make content creation faster, uh, make editing video or keying video faster, um, adding subtitles, making those kinds of things much more performant it's still not clear what their plans in the future are for Siri or to have kind of a, a more complex kind of assistant. I think looking at the flops of the Rabbit R1 and the Humane AI pin, who both kind of, who both took kind of the, uh, a different angle at the AI assistant idea, um, showed that people just don't really care and that the AI assistant is really, it was a fever dream of like 2016, um, maybe even before that. And now it's just, not really something people think is that cool. Uh, aside from, you know, the issue of people not wanting to record all of their own conversations all the times to let a lot of these devices work. And I think the big takeaway here really is where Apple is making large commitments in hardware to AI. I think what I'm most curious in seeing is where the M4 Ultra may arise in terms of its performance. Uh, obviously, we're going to see really incredible performance in uh, the next line of MacBooks. This is really cool to see as well, because since you can buy the new iPad basically on May 15th, I think, and have it shipped, clearly, I don't think Apple is having production issues with this processor. And I think it shows that clearly they have a massive focus on AI going forward, especially for development and things like MLX. And I can't wait until someone gets one of these iPads um, just to see if we can run Llama 3 or one of the really cool sort of lighter weight quantizations of some leading edge models to see how well these actually run on the latest Apple NPU. People will make fun of the iPad because people wonder, you know, does it, did it really need to be a few uh, sections of a millimeter smaller? But it does look cool. Apple knows what they're doing. And I think if they're willing to show us the M4 chip in the iP in the new iPad and that they have enough of them to even ship, I think we're lining up to see some really, really cool things with the next line of MacBook Pros. And specifically, the next Mac Studio with the hopeful uh, you know, M4 Ultra. And we'll see what we get there. And frankly, uh, I might eat my words, but I think the M4 Ultra will probably be more of a blockbuster and more of a big mover in terms of local AI. 
than the RTX 5090 because we know that they're making so much money with the H100, the H200, and all of their new kind of enterprise AI chips that the 5090 is is basically on the farthest back back burner of any of the stoves in NVIDIA's research facilities and especially in their fabs in Taiwan at TSMC. So I'm curious, are any of you guys planning on buying the new iPad to do AI things? Would you consider having this new iPad as a primary machine for local AI? Uh, I've run some models on my phone, but you know, obviously the experience is kind of different and I do a lot of MLX stuff on my Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. There's always a really interesting discussion going on there. And as always, I hope you learned something. And if you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.